Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about muddy water fishing. It's the middle of winter, muddy, murky water is inevitable before spring arrives, and bass fishing can be tough under those conditions. But we've got five baits here that will help you be more consistent when that muddy water arrives at your lake. Midwinter is when most of the country starts dealing with muddy water. It typically comes and goes until we get closer to spring, but by now the ground is saturated and as your storms come in, they actually run off into the lake and give you murky water conditions. Adapting to that can be really foreign and really difficult for an angler. Understanding when to make adjustments, when to fish it, when to give up, that's all important details. Now, as we get closer to spring and muddy water becomes a bigger and bigger factor in your fishing, we'll go more and more in depth. But today we're going to talk about five different baits that will really help you through these conditions. First and foremost, when should you try and fish the mud and when should you just give up and back away from it? That's probably the most important thing for you. Rule of thumb. If the water coming into the lake, when you get a storm and that mud starts running and it's dumping in, if that water is colder than the actual lake water, the fishing is going to get extremely difficult. I wish I had better news than that, but it's the truth. It gets really hard. About the only way you catch those fish is to really slow down, focus on slow fishing a jig, but really just picking it apart piece by piece, it's difficult. The best thing to do is that if your lake is large enough that down towards the other end of the lake, away from the creeks is still cleaner water, a lot of times it's just easier to abandon your plan altogether, go to the other end of the lake and start developing new patterns until that water clears back up. That really is your best option if the water is warmer than the water in the lake. When that muddy water starts coming, if it's a couple degrees warmer than the lake, that is a whole different ball game. That's when the fishing can be really, really good, even in the middle of winter. As that warm water starts dumping in, the fish will come to that warm water. They'll start to congregate in that muddy or murky water. They move extremely shallow and you're able to catch them on reaction baits. Now here's one little tip that a lot of people miss. That muddy water does not stick around as long as you realize. In most fisheries, you'll get that big flush of water after a storm. All that mud will blow in, it'll blow out the lake, it'll start moving towards the dam, and people assume that the whole lake is muddy. But it typically only takes two or three or four or five days for the actual creek at the top to clear back up and to start flushing in clean water behind the mud. So after a storm, the first place to find the cleanest water is as far from that creek as you can get. But a few days later, the best pit place to find truly crystal clear water is back at the mouth of the creek behind the mud. So when I'm saying go to the other end of the lake, that's not necessarily for a week or two weeks or for a month. It might just be for a couple of days before you come back up and check that clear water at the top of that creek. So let's get into the baits. Let's assume you've got warmer water coming in because that's when the fishing is better. Some things to keep in mind. When that water visibility crashes, you start getting muddy water, you're going to want to go to either brighter colors, if they're fast moving baits, brighter colors. If you're slow bottom fishing, those solid dark colors will stand out as a silhouette. So if you're slow fishing, those darker colors will really help. If you're fast fishing, the chartreuses, the whites, gold blades, painted blades, those brighter colors will really help. Now also sound is a key factor. So the murkier that water gets, I'm going to go to baits that make a little bit of ruckus, that have some sound to them. So why don't we just start there? 
The first bait, you'll notice four of these five baits are weedless. There's a reason for that. As that muddy water comes in, your lake level will start to rise. Those fish come to that warmer muddy water and as it's actively rising, the fish will come right to the shore and they'll rise with it. They'll be hunting right there along the shoreline and we're talking in inches of water. That's all they need, just enough water to cover their back and they'll be up there hunting the bugs and the critters and everything that's getting flushed into the lake. So it's really important that you go with weedless baits so that you can throw into that ultra shallow water. Because if you throw in there and get snagged, a bass in four or five or six inches of water is not going to stick around if you come up there with a boat trying to get a lure freed. So weedless baits are key. First one is the square bill. A square bill crankbait with a rattle in it is one of my favorite ways to catch those fish. I can take that square bill, throw it right up into the shallowest of water, and it'll bounce and deflect and bump its way down through everything. It's making a ruckus in the water. I can stop and go, be aggressive, and really trigger those strikes from those fish that are up there hunting for a meal. As far as color goes, one of my favorites is actually red, red or orange. If I'm not throwing red or orange, if it's not working, I'm gonna go to either white or chartreuse. I keep it that simple. You want those bold colors that those fish can find easily. They're gonna hear that thing coming. They're going to feel it coming. And right when they're about to eat it, they're going to see it and it's going to help them hit that target. So that makes a big difference. So keep that in mind. Next bait, the spinner bait. The spinner bait is often overlooked. In parts of this country, everyone throws it. In other parts of the country, no one throws it. It's thought of as a, an old bait that people used to throw. Well, that is not the case. The spinner bait is a fish catching machine. You know that Tim and I both throw it throughout the year, but my absolute favorite time to throw a spinner bait is in that late winter, early spring, muddy rising water. Same scenario, the fish are up there on the bank, a spinner bait with no trailer hook. That is critical. No trailer hook at all. Just a bait. I put a swim bait on it to give it the bulk to help them key in on the actual bait. If you fish it with no trailer hook and no trailer, they'll almost always eat the blades because they come in for the vibration and if they don't have much to see, they hit the vibration. But if they come in and right when they get to it, they can see a little bit and they see the bulk, the body of the bait there, they see the swim bait and the skirt, they tend to eat it whole and you're going to get a good hook in them. But the reason why you go with no trailer hook is that without a trailer, you can throw a spinner bait into almost anything. The actual arm that the blades are on works as that weedless deflector. It'll bounce through logs, grass, rock, wood. It comes through everything so well, but when the fish eat it, they still get the hook. You start adding that trailer hook, you don't come through cover anywhere near as well. So that's important. Again, with colors, I like to stick with that chartreuse, white, those bold colors. This is also the time of year where you'll see, you'll see guys switch over and do the lemonade twist where they've got that one orange blade as well. Personally, I still like willows. Even in that muddy water, I do not go to a Colorado. Where I fish, we have a lot of shad. The willow blade does the best job of imitating that vibration that the shad give off. And even in murky water, I do better with a willow than a Colorado. If your fishery is more bluegill focused or something other than shad, definitely experiment with going to a Colorado or to an Indiana and you might get more bites. But if you're around shad, again, I love those willow blades. And down in the video description, we'll link you the exact baits. We'll link you the square bill, the spinner baits, all of these different things that we're throwing. Next up, the jig. Both a swim jig and a standard jig. The swim jig is going to fall into that exact same scenario as the spinner bait and the square bill. 
fire it up there shallow, bang it through the cover. The difference is it's even more weedless. Now you give up the blades, you give up all that vibration. So it's a little harder for the fish to find it. I make up for that by going to a trailer that has a much harder kick than the Kitek. The D Walker has a heavy vibration. It's very easy for those fish to track in the water. The benefit of the swim jig over the spinnerbait is that it's even more weedless. So only you know what lake you're fishing. I have no idea. So if your lake has fairly open shoreline, it's a reservoir, it's got rock and mud banks, you don't need the swim jig, go with the spinnerbait. But if you've got heavy brush, laid down logs, and that spinnerbait is hanging up, switch to that swim jig because it's almost 100% weedless. It will come through virtually anything. It just takes it to that next level. You can get even shallower, even farther back in the junk and get more of those fish. Same rules with colors, whites, chartreuses. It's very simple and very consistent. Now the actual jig. The difference with the jig or the reason why I go to the jig is even under those optimal conditions, sometimes the, the storm will end and the sun will pop out and the fish don't want to feed or it'll be associated with a cold snap and the fish just are not aggressive. All sorts of different reasons why they might stop chasing the bait in that shallow water, but they're still sitting up there in that warm water. That's where the jig becomes a factor. You want to go to a fairly bulky jig, black, black and blue, something bold. Rattles are a nice touch, a nice bonus where you can shake that jig a little bit, make a little bit of sound, but it's not a must have. The trailer, you want a bulky trailer that's got some kick to it. You don't want that dead action. You want a little bit of kick. And I like to go with a dark jig with a bold trailer. So this is a black and blue jig. It's actually hematoma paired up. This is a reaction innovations kinky beaver, but the color is called low blow. It's a very bright in this light. It really doesn't show up, but it's a very, very bright blue, blue to purple trailer with a sparkle in it. Very, very bright. So again, I've got a bold profile. They see the profile, but when they really come in on it, there's that bright color there too, and they can really dial in and eat that thing effectively and get the whole bait. I have done so much damage with this exact setup on shallow water, muddy water fish in the springtime, in the late winter. Big fish in reservoirs, natural lakes out on the California Delta. We've smashed them on this exact setup. It works incredibly well. And the nice thing when you're fishing that ultra shallow cover and it's muddy, you don't need light line. You can even throw it on straight braided line and then really take advantage of that giant hook. If you've got big fish in your lake, you can really lay into them, horse them out of that cover. If you're in a lake that has smaller fish, go to a, a little bit smaller hook, a little bit lighter line just because you don't need it, you'll still get those fish. Last but not least, is an A-Rig. The A-Rig, not weedless, not for the ultra shallow, but still those fish pull to that moving water, they pull to that running water. Maybe you're in a steep walled reservoir where they really can't get up on a flat with brush or anything, but they still will pull right into the boulders, right where that water is running in. And for a time, they actually become a river fish effectively. Think of it as a giant inline spinner. It's like trout fishing with a panther martin or a rooster tail on a grand scale. You go to a bladed A-Rig, you have to have blades in that murky water just to help those fish dial in. Now, can you catch fish without it? Sure, but you will catch more fish with the blades than without. Throw that thing right up shallow, but fish it fast and aggressive with a lot of twitches and a lot of pops to draw their attention. The murkier the water, the more bold you want your baits. So Pro Blue Red Pearl is the standard Kitek that we throw day in and day out. I will immediately go to a pearl. You want a really bright, really bold, solid color. You can even go to Chartreuse Blue to really help those fish find the baits in that muddy water. 
But the, again, that A-Rig, it's a different approach for a little bit different condition, but it will flat put fish in the boat when they're up there hunting for that easy meal, especially around current. So five baits or five different styles of bait that all work in that muddy water. Again, I said in the beginning, as we get closer to spring and mud becomes more and more of a factor, because on our lake, I'm actually jumping the gun. We're not muddy yet, but some of you guys already are. So we wanted you to give you some of that information. Now, I can't take you out on my lake and go catch them in muddy water today because I still have some visibility. As we get closer to spring and we get a lot more mud here, we can take you out first person and actually do it and show you some of this stuff. But we wanted to get you off on the right foot for those of you that are ahead of us in the cycle. Hope this information helps. Again, we'll link all the baits and gear and everything down in the video description, and there'll be more of this in the coming months. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.